So the first thing on our agenda is uh, to continue the public hearing for Sovereign Builders um, notice of intent and request for an amended order of conditions for the self-storage facility on State Road. Um, so uh, at this point, I'd like to yield the floor to Chris and or Todd to present the changes that you've made uh, since our last meeting. Excellent. Well, uh, my name is Christopher Carney. I'm here from Pioneer Land Planning on behalf of uh, Kotzler of Sovereign Builders to discuss the project off State Road in Waitley. Um, as everyone is aware, we've gone through a couple meetings on this project, so I'll just go over some of the changes that were made based on your comments at the last uh, Conservation Commission meeting. So I'll share my screen and go through those comments. Can everyone see my screen? It's coming. There you go. Great. All right, um, so the first two sheets of the plan set had remained unchanged. All the revisions were done on the third sheet. Uh, there were a couple of requests. Um, some of them had to do with the type of stone that was in the stream bed, uh, as well as the uh, path for the sump pumps. So as you see, the uh, the stone types of- can you, can you zoom in on that, Chris? Sure. The, uh, yeah. Thanks. I'll head to the... Um, so I guess the first place to start would be where these submersible pumps will be placed and where they will outlet in order to dewater uh, the stream during construction. So these are the two uh, proposed locations for the sump pumps. Uh, they'll be electric and not gasoline powered, uh, and they will discharge um, down gradient below the construction. Uh, we've placed the upstream some pump here that would be for clean water as it's upstream it'll be the first place to capture and it would outlet here directly into the stream and if there's any sediment laden uh, water that would be discharged to this uh, sediment filter bag here. Okay. Uh, next there were uh, requests about the stone I know the stone was listed as rounded stone in the notes but was uh, rip wrap and so that has been changed in all of these cross sections. And then there was a, a larger comment about the elevations of the stream bed, uh, that the proposed crossing had a different elevation on the cross sections than the upstream and the downstream cross sections. So uh, the cross sections shown on the first set of plans were based on the existing conditions survey, which wasn't really a survey of the stream bed. So between over the last month, uh, between these meetings, I went out to the site and did some measurements of the stream bed uh, to get a more accurate cross section. And uh, that was definitely an important and fruitful journey. Uh, the stream bed is definitely higher than it was initially shown. Mm -hmm. And so the stream bed of the crossing has been adjusted to match the upstream and downstream elevations. Uh, the, the existing culvert is really submerged and below the flow or, or the thalweg of the existing brook. So uh, it has been raised to match that. Now, this stream does have a, a bit of organic material at the bottom of it. So um, measuring the exact depth of the stream is difficult uh, and it can be variable. Uh, and right now, it is covered in the punch through the ice in a number of places to get uh, accurate measurements, but it'll be up to uh, Todd and the contractor to make sure that fellweg matches uh, the upstream and the downstream elevation. And that, that is shown on the plan that, uh, to maintain and match elevations upstream and downstream. Uh, so the original plan showed this stream crossing bed at 163, and we're now showing it at about 164. Uh, in order to match upstream and downstream grades. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think that really covers the bulk of the, the major revisions. So at this point, I'll stop sharing the screen and uh, open up to any questions. So uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? No, I'm all set. 
guess my my only question is is that I'd raise the issue that on the plans it says that um, the wetlands replication work will be done uh, the same time as site work, and uh, that's still on the plans. Um, seems to be unchanged. Yep. But I think it may. The commission may interpret it as that they're still going to be on the site. They're not going to be finished with the construction until later in the season. And as long as they're still on the site, um, the wetland replication would be done while they are doing site work. Um, so I had asked if you had a sense of what would be a safe time to say when that would be concluded. You know that the rep, rep, the initial wetland replication work would be done by, uh, you know, July thirty first. Uh, so, do you have a suggestion for that? I think Todd has a better understanding than I do of the construction sequence, but I think we're open to uh, comments from the commission. So, I think last time we we said that we would put it in, put September as the date and we'd also put a note that we couldn't we wouldn't get a certificate of occupancy or wouldn't be able to get a certificate of occupancy unless it was verified that the replication was done yeah so i don't think we can prohibit somebody from getting a certificate of occupancy so um i don't know that we have any enforcement mechanism for that unless it's like a written component of your notice. Maybe certificate of compliance, is that what? The certificate of compliance is different, right? Yeah. But we have nothing to do with occupancy. So um, right. if, if what you mean is certificate of compliance, yes, that would obvious, be an obvious thing. Um, so you're saying September. So September 1, September 15, September 30, what do you? Say because, September 30th, but you know, the goal is to be done long before that. So, I mean, September 30th is pretty much the end of the growing season. Or right. So, we would hope to have things established and viewed and approved by that time, September 30th. Yeah. And chances are you'll be better off if you can do. I'm think I'm a I imagine that it would be better to do that when it's relatively dry so that you're not excavating into mud uh, while you're while you're there. So you probably want to get it done in July and August. All right. Um, so again, I'll just open it up for any additional questions or comments. Anybody have anything? September 30th sounds like a reasonable deadline for me you know like they said the end of the growing season so so then would we um um be able to go and have a look at it after yeah, um, yeah the um there's part of our, the, our original order of conditions had a special condition that there'd be an environmental monitor that would oversee that so i think you know they would notify us when the work was going to be done and presumably give us permission to come and look at it either in in process or you know maybe come on a weekend and see how it's going so is that a good assumption todd yes okay all right um so let's talk about the the orders of conditions that we might issue if it's voted for approval um the the order of conditions that we had before the way i look at them we had six special conditions and i think one of them we would need to eliminate and then maybe we would add one more so the first one has to do with submitting the stormwater pollution prevention plan which is already done but therefore it doesn't need to change so i'm not going to take it out but i just leave it in because that was part of the original order and this is an amended order 
Um, more detailed plans for the stream crossing. Again, I feel like that's been fulfilled, but I'm going to leave it in there because it was there's no need to, to change it. Um, stream crossing and wetland replication work will be supervised by environmental coordinator and monitor. So that condition I would recommend that we keep. Uh, Pre-construction meeting, we have already had one with the uh, silt fence and all in place. I would suggest that we may, uh, that it might be good to have another pre-construction meeting when you're getting ready to do this, the stream crossing to make sure that all the erosion control is in place. Uh, dewatering elements are in place, uh, or I guess those might come a little bit later, but just to make sure that you're ready to go, given that it might happen, um, you know, in during winter conditions, if we ever have any. Um, the, the fifth special condition was the stream crossing shall be installed during a period when the stream is dry and substantial rain is not expected. Um, I think what I would do is maybe alter this and just say uh, that the stream crossing shall be installed during a period when substantial rain is not expected. So take out the requirement that it be done dry and just, you know, but uh, retain that part that basically says that, you know, if you're expecting three inches of rain, don't go out there and get started. Uh, and then the last one is uh, all fill brought in from offsite shall be free of contamination by invasive plant species. And so I suggest we keep that. And then the, the additional one would have to do with the timing of the completion of the wetland replication work, the September 30th deadline to get that work done. So um, uh, first I'll ask the commission whether you agree with that proposal or whether you would like to amend it or suggest any additional conditions? I agree with that, Scott. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm good with that too. I agree as well. Todd, how's that sound to you and Chris? It sounds fine, I guess, except for I'm not sure what we'll accomplish by another pre-construction meeting. So, <clears throat> so prior to us putting in place the the silk, you know, the sandbags and so on, you want to you want to meet on site. I mean, we're, it's in a sense, it's double coverage. You've got Meredith, who's going to oversee the work. I mean, I'm fine with it. I just, I, I just wonder what we're going to accomplish. We're going to take a quick look, and which is something she's doing already. She's, but I'm, you know, I'm happy to have you do that. I just don't know that it's going to accomplish much. Yeah, I think what I'm most interested in doing is meeting with the contractor and. Just having a short conversation to make sure that we know who each other are and, you know, just sort of reinforce that we're going to keep an eye on this because we're going to be working in the stream. Um, and that we want to know if anything goes wrong, even, you know, that if, if people let us know right away, we're not going to come down on them, but that, you know, we want to be able to be involved if any corrective action is necessary. Uh, so it's just a brief on-site meeting just to make sure that everything is ready to go and people understand what the conditions are, make sure they're clear about the, the special conditions that I just read, uh, because that that sometimes can be an area of miscommunication during projects. It's, it's really fine with me. Maybe once, once we've voted here, once you've all voted, that we could schedule this meeting so that we can, so that you can have this face to face with with the contractor and then we can you know schedule the work and get started rather than trying to schedule it and then schedule the pre-construction meeting which can you know yeah there's no reason why you need to wait you know we can get out there once you have the sandbags in place and the, and the sediment control uh you know we can meet out there so if you want to set a date and then make sure everything is ready by that date, that, that's fine was, with me. I, was, I guess I'm, I was confused. Then. So you want a, a pre-construction meeting after the sandbags are in place? I thought it was before we would start any of the work on the cross. Well, it, you know, the erosion, you know, the base, well, I guess maybe not the sandbags, but it's just making sure that erosion control is in place before you get started. And it's just a chance to make sure since it, you're going to 
potentially be installing it in frozen ground. There's potential for there to be gaps. And so it's just a chance to take a look. And if there's any settling or any gaps, we get those repaired. And then we and we have the meeting at the same time. So it all happens all at once with one meeting. Okay. Sure. I mean, the sandbags may be more for reinforcing this. I don't know exactly the role of the sandbags. Is that to try to retain? Uh, so like as work as a retaining wall so that you can work so, in that area or is it part of this erosion control it's a literal dam that has to stop the flow of water and then it has to be pumped over you know to the other side well yeah i know for the for the for the dewatering i just it seemed to go along the road edge as well for some distance oh, if i remember that right that doesn't have any purpose um <clears throat> really but okay I mean, mostly uh, it's mostly erosion control that we want to make sure is in place. Um, so other, but this is something that you are, are the other conditions that we talked about, you're fine with those as well? I, I am, yeah. Okay. Chris, do you have any comments on the, on the, on the conditions? Do you have any? I think they're suitable comments and they match up with the uh, previous comments. Yeah, I mean, the, the goal is to change this as little as possible because it's an amended order of conditions. And the key issue was, you know, the requirement to work when the stream was dry. And so that's one that we will change. And, <clears throat> and then because you can no longer do the work concurrent with the road to stream crossing, the replication work, we're going to you know, put this additional condition about when that replication work has to be completed. So it's just tweaking the order uh, to reflect the new con conditions that you're dealing with. Okay. And new, you know, the site conditions and the, the timing conditions, not the order of conditions. Um, um, right. I, I as far as amending that uh, order condition, I think that's great. I just wanted to cover that the expansion of the work area is part of possibly a new NOI and that needs to be addressed somehow. Right, right. That's a separate question that we'll have to vote on. Um, so we have a couple of issues to vote on. We uh, Once we vote to close the hearing, we can vote on the amended order of conditions and then we're gonna vote on a new order of conditions for the uh, the change in the water supply line, you know, being a trench rather than being uh, uh, directional boring. Um, and so um, at this point, I think we're probably ready to close the hearing. So uh, commissioners all in favor of closing the public hearing, raise your hand or say aye. 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 All right. And now for the amended order of conditions, um, you know, we have the proposed conditions that I just mentioned. Uh, so the, uh, the, the, the proposal before the board is to approve the project with those conditions. Uh, so to issue an order of conditions that approves the project, authorizes it, and with the order of conditions that we discussed during the public hearing. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then lastly, the uh, order of conditions, the new order of conditions for the uh, the new the the water main or the water line. Um, my recommendation would be just to approve it without any special conditions, because all of the conditions on the amended order would would apply to the water work as well. Uh, this, any comment on that, commissioners? No. No. Okay. So. Um, a decision to approve, uh, to issue an order of conditions that approves the project with no special conditions. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So I believe that we're done with that. Um, so uh, Anne Montserrat and Andrew, are you interested in going to the pre-construction meeting or do you want me to just handle that myself? 
I'm fine with you handling it yourself, but if you let me know when it is, I, I might come if I can. Okay. Same here. Yeah, same with you, Scott. Just fine with you handling it. Okay. So um, we can try to set that date now, or we can do it by email with just the three of us or two of us, if you want. So if we could, um, let's try and set it now. Why don't we look at the first week in March or somewhere thereabouts? First full week in March or? Yeah, let's see. Week of the fifth. Yeah, so I'm, um, I could probably do it the afternoon of the sixth. Okay. So um, I, I want to check, you know, obviously I have to check with some of the other folks that, that you want to meet on site, some of the people that are doing work. And so but let's technically say March 6th. Okay. All right, so uh, what time would you like to do that? How about, I mean, the earlier I'm sure is better for some of the other folks. So what, what works for you? What, three o'clock, is that too early? You said three o'clock? Yeah. Yeah, three o'clock's fine. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. I'll just, uh, after my morning class, I'll come home and work at home until the meeting. All right, three o'clock um, on March 6th. Uh, and then if you need to change it, just let me know. Okay, I'll, I'll email you if that doesn't work for the others. All right, anything else? Not on our end. All right, like I said, it concludes our business for agenda item number one. Thank you for your time tonight. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. Okay, take care. All right, second on the agenda is the request for determination of applicability uh, for the utility work down by the Connecticut River. So Virginia, uh, why don't you go ahead and describe the project? You know, we all saw it, but uh, since we're recording the meeting, there are other people that actually watch the recordings. And so this will give them a sense of what it is that we're talking about. Sure. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Virginia Martell with BSC Group, and we also have Christopher LaRose, who's here from Eversource with us. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and talk through the project just a little bit here. Yeah, I think I got to make you a co-host, so just give me a minute. All right, you should be able to share now. Okay. Got the map up. <laughs> Sometimes I'm worried about the wrong screen. Okay. Um, so I'm here to present the 18G6 and 18G8 direct cable replacement project that is proposed by Eversource. So here we have um, Straits Road in Waitley and River Road. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And currently there are two direct buried cables located through this APR parcel that leave these two utility poles, 23B38 and 23B37. And they travel east towards the Connecticut River to a transmission line that crosses the Connecticut River. These um, cables that are here are direct buried, which means they're not encased in PVC conduit or anything and they're aging. And because Waitley, South Deerfield, Hatfield, several areas are also looking at a lot of infrastructure going in in the next couple of years, they need to increase their load capacity on these lines so that they can still provide safe and reliable energy to customers. As proposed, these two direct buried lines here will be replaced with a underground conduit and manhole system. 
So what that means is that they will trench the area that they need to put in the new cable and then they will put PVC conduit in there that's encased in concrete and then cover it back over afterwards. As part of the project, they will need to install two new manholes to access the cables in the future. The first manhole we would be looking at on roadside um, outside of any resource areas or buffer zones between these two existing lines. And then as part of the project, we have the second manhole that would be located in within riverfront area, the 100 foot buffer zone to Inland Bank, and then also within natural heritage, endangered species and priority habitat. As part of the RDA, um, all of this, work it most of this work is considered replacement or is outside of jurisdictional areas except the manhole since it will be a, a new impact um, within these resource areas i'm sorry it's also in bordering land subject to flooding to install this manhole a large seven by 16 by six i think um hole will have to be made and then the manhole and the manhole box will be installed and then everything will be covered and restored to pre-construction conditions afterwards. In the end, the only above ground impact that we will have is 7.8 square feet and that's from an iron cover, so a basic manhole cover that you would see anywhere else. Um, this, I would say, would probably revegetate itself at some point in the future. We often have to un dig and uncover those manhole covers after they're put in to find them again. Um, as part of this, we did go to Natural Heritage and coordinate with them on the work within their area. And they've approved this work under their existing operations and maintenance plan. So we've already, we don't have to submit a separate NOI or anything with them. Uh, that's the basic rundown of the project. Um, in presenting this RDA, we're just looking for a negative determination stating that the work is within resource area, but it won't affect the resource area pretty much. Okay, thank you, Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions or comments? Chris, I should have given you an opportunity to add anything if you would like. So if you want a speaking role, here's your chance. <laughs> Hi, Scott. No, I'm, I'm thank you, Virginia, for for taking the time to pull this project together. And I know you guys were able to all meet on site, so I've got nothing to add. All right. Questions, comments from commissioners? No, nope. nope, I'm all set. All right. I have no questions either. Um, so I see there's three options we can choose from uh, in responding to this request for determination of applicability. One is to issue a positive determination, which would require a notice of intent. Another is to, uh, to say that, yes, it is within resource area, but we don't believe it will have any adverse effect, essentially saying that it's a minor project, a minor activity. Um, the third option is to judge that this is actually part of maintenance of an existing utility and we view it as being exempt from the wetlands protection act so um if there are if yeah you know, feel free to tell me which option you think is most appropriate with a minor activity i believe ann or montserrat what do you i'm think? fine with that yeah, I'm good with a minor activity. Okay. I would be tempted to say it's exempt, but either way, it's still a negative determination. So I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. Um, so um, I'm happy to go along with the idea that it's just minor activity and therefore no notice of intent is required. And I assume we would put no conditions on that. You can also do a negative determination with, with conditions. But... I, I don't think there's a need for it, but uh, if anybody thinks so, go ahead and speak up. 
No, I agree. I agree with Did you. Did you say something, Virginia? Because you were muted. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Um, I, all I said was that the project will follow Eversource's BMPs as far as erosion controls or sediment controls as needed. So, yeah. All right. So the proposal before us is to issue a negative determination of applicability without conditions. And uh, the box that I'll check is is that it's within resource area, but is con essentially I'll say it's regulatorily exempt as a minor activity. Is essentially what we're going to do. Um, so, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, that was quick and easy, and I didn't have to drag you all the way to Waitley to, to make it happen. So, uh, any last words before we take care of this? Uh, you know, what we have to do is is uh, I have to prepare the paperwork, then I leave it at the town offices for other commissioners to sign. So, there may be a slight delay in getting it mailed out to you. Uh, but we will uh, get it out hopefully this week. But, you know, the offices are closed on Friday. So if people can't get there and sign it tomorrow, it usually ends up Monday before we finally get it all packaged up and ready to go. So if that's going to be a hardship, this is a chance to let me know. But if that's okay with you, that's that's probably how it will go. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that that timeline works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. All right. All right. Can well, we usually get into that vestibule even if the um, office is closed? Can you? I think so. I think you still need a key. Sometimes the inner door is left unlocked, but I think the outer door is always locked. Oh. All right. If I can get to it, I may drop it off tonight so that you guys, if any of you can get there tomorrow, you can go ahead and sign it. But, you know, if it takes the weekend to get it done or Monday to get it done, we'll. We'll, we'll get it out as soon as we can after that. Monday's the holiday. With a no, yeah, Monday's, Monday's a holiday, so it'll be Tuesday. <laughs> um, but same thing for the uh, the sovereign builder stuff. So there'll be three sets of paperwork that you'll need to sign, and I'll try to pull it all together either tonight or tomorrow morning and get it there sometime in the morning, in case you can get there. Uh, you know, while the doors are unlocked. All right, Chris, Virginia, thanks so much. You're all set. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank you all. All right. Have a good night. Bye. 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 All right, next order of business is the minutes. Uh, anybody have any comments or corrections for the minutes? No, no corrections. All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Aye. Uh, and I think the only update that I have is that um, I'm going to be meeting with the finance committee on Tuesday to talk about uh, our budget request for money for the shared conservation agent. Okay. So, um, well, I'll let you know how it goes, but uh, apparently uh you know when i submitted my budget i based before i submitted the budget i had written to brian to say that i wanted to put in money for the shared agent but i didn't know how much our share would be so i'm not sure how much money to put in you know what does he suggest so he said well you know just put something in and and we'll consider it and i i explained to him the rationale that basically you know it would be easier for me to stay on as chair if, the, if i had some help and even if I was no longer the chair, it'd be easier to find somebody to be the chair if there was some help. And somehow that got translated to the finance committee as I was retiring from the conservation commission. And so I was yeah, sitting during dinner while they were meeting and suddenly my phone went off and Patty said, you're retiring? It was like, what? <laughs> Or resigning. It was your resigning. And I was, so I wrote back and said, who said that? So we had a little text exchange. And then she called me after the meeting. And basically, I said, I can join your meeting if you want me to explain. And they said, no, you can come to our next meeting. So that that's going to be on the 21st. So, you know, luckily, Patty is looking out for us because she's been on the commission. She knows what it's like. So hopefully we'll have an advocate within the finance committee who can vouch for the the, the need for it for this. Do you have any 
any news, any updates? Yeah, I just want to say that during this meeting, I found um, three stink bugs and one tick. <laughs> <laughs> We've been getting stink bugs all along through the winter, but yeah, uh, the ticks actually the dog came in with one on his foot last week so yeah this, this one was around. on me today after walking outside hmm. and the ladybugs are starting to rouse you know, oh they've been here all days. winter the ladybugs yeah but they usually hold up until you get a sunny spring day and then they're like falling all over the windows and stuff not not anymore that used to be true at our house now that now it's constant all year oh oh yeah yep i guess you don't that will probably happen to enough. you <laughs> Now, one time I was in the back in, uh, working on my computer and doing some kind of work, and I had opened a beer. And, uh, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, while I was working, one of those ladybugs had crawled inside the bottle. And so when I took a swig. I got a lump, and I wasn't expecting a lump. And these ladybugs are what are called contact bleeders. Is that one of their defenses when you try to yeah. pick them up? Is is they they. They, they have that peppery stink. A myth uh, that, yeah, uh, and it doesn't taste very good either. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have to make these recordings interesting for people who watch them after after our meeting's over. So, if anybody else wants to tell a good story, feel free. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like we're done for the night. Uh, thank you for coming and. Uh, We'll see you next month on the same 15th of the month as we do in February. <laughs> <laughs>